Hey everybody, Sue's here from Revelation Quilts. Check out this quilt behind me. This is called Spectrum and I love it. I didn't know what to do with a pack of 10 fat quarters and of course I wanted to design my own thing. So this is what I came up with. It's pretty easy to make. It was a little more time consuming than the quilts I usually throw together, but I think it was well worth it. It's so pretty and it almost looks like stained glass. So I really love that. So follow along with me and we will make it together. Let's do it. So I've got a pack of 10 fat quarters here. And when I get fat quarters, I love to look at them, but I never really know what to do with them as far as designing my own pattern. But I think I finally came up with something that I can use these fat quarters for. They're really cool. They look like, they almost look hand dyed. These are um, Oclo Mason for QT fabrics. I don't know where I got them. I think I may have gotten them from the Soya uh, Brothers. And, but that's, I don't know. I don't know. I've had them for a little bit, but I think I've come up with something. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna iron them all out so they're nice and flat. Okay, so I've got all my fat quarters ironed up and man, are they pretty. They are so gorgeous. I just love the colors. And like I said, I think they look almost hand dyed, but I know that they're not, but I just love the colors. I love the variety. So I've got five here and I'm comfortable cutting five. Now these are fat quarters. Fat quarters usually measure about 22 by 18 but you will want to measure these because sometimes they fall short or they're a little bigger. So I know this is uh, 22. So I'm, I know I can get, I can cut it on the, on this side, I can get six rows that are three and a half inches. Cause if I take, uh, let's say I take 21 and I divide that by three and a half, I get six. So I am going to cut, and I am trying out a new blade with this quilt. So this is a titanium blade that I got, and I'm, I have done a review on this, which is already up, um, and they're giving us a special price on these blades. So you wanna take advantage of that if you're interested. So anyway, I'm just going to cut three and a half inch columns, and I'm gonna get six out of these. So as I'm cutting, I'm just gonna set them aside and um, boy, that, that blade is nice. So anyway, so I'm just gonna get these cut. So here is the last one and it's just working out perfectly with very, very little waste, which is really nice. So this is all I've got for waste. I'm very happy with that. So here we are. I've got my strips that are three and a half inches wide by 18 inches. And so I should be able to get three six inch cuts out of here. So I am going to just trim up the edges to make sure I start with a nice even edge and just get that trimmed up. Perfect, just like that. And there's my little bit. And so six inches. So I will actually have a bunch of bricks that are three and a half inches by six inches. And this is nice because we're gonna end up trimming these down once the block is made, but this is a nice size to start with. And as you can see, it's just going to give me just tiny little strips at the end. That's, this is all the, the waste that I have, which is great. And so I'm gonna cut up all of my fat quarters like this. So I've got 10 fat quarters and I will get 18 bricks. Let's call them bricks. I'll get 18 bricks out of each fat quarter. So that will give me a total of 180 rectangles out of all of these fat quarters. So that will, um, 
that's what we're going to work with. 180 of them. So let me get these all cut up and then we will go on to the next step. So here I've got them all cut up and they are so pretty, you guys. I love them. So there's 18 of each color and then there's 10 fat quarters. So that makes 180. And so we are just going to stack these up and set them aside because we also need some black fabric or a dark color because I want you to make this quilt yours. You're, you don't have, uh, you won't necessarily be using these fat quarters if you want to make this. So just a contrasting color. And so I am going to use black and I buy my black fabric by the bolt. This fabric, we're only going to use um, one inch widths at a time. So I just put my, put my fabric out like this and I just cut one inch strips at a time. So I'm just going to cut my first one inch strip and I don't, I don't cut all of my strips at once. I just do, I just work with one strip at a time. So I'm just going to cut one, one inch strip from this and then we are ready to get started. And I know not everybody buys their black fabric by the bolt, but honestly it's cheaper and I just use so much of it that I just buy it by the bolt. And I wish I could tell you where I got this, but I can't remember. So we're just going to put this aside and we're going to get our first strip that we cut and we are just going to make a random cut across the short side of this and we're going to do it at any angle in any direction so this is completely up to you it doesn't have to be a perfect angle i am just going to cut like this and then i'm going to take my strip and i'm going to sew it down the one side of this and then press it back like this and then sew this back on so the strip is going right through the center of that so let me get this sewn on there and um, i'll show you a little trick on how to get it straight okay so i've got my strip sewn on i've got it pressed down and you'll want all of your seams to go towards the black strip um, because it will it will hide inside of there. So now I want to sew this this back on. So I'm just going to lay it across the top, like not right at the top, but like just so it overlaps a tiny bit. And I want to line up the sides here like this. I'm just going to lay it across the top like that. And then if I just gently fold it over, I can see the exact angle that it needs to be at. And so I just hold that there, take it over the machine, and sew that down. So let's see how accurate I got that. Okay, so I've sewn it on, and I'm just going to press it back like this. I'm going to press that black, to uh, press the seam towards that black strip. I think I did pretty good. It's a little bit off. That's okay, because we're going to trim it as we go. So I'm just going to trim off that black a little bit. We're going to trim the whole block at the end so it can be off a little bit. Let's see, I just want to get it straight up and down. Now that I trim it, I can tell that it's off a little more than I thought. That's okay. So we're just going to iron that flat. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another cut across there. So I'm just going to do a random cut. I think I'll crisscross them like this. But you definitely want it to go from one side to the other. Don't make it go two sides like this. You want it to go across the entire block. So I'm just going to make this cut like that. And I'm going to go back and get my black strip. And I'm just going to sew this black strip like that so it crosses. Of course, they'll be lined up all beautiful. So let me get this sewn on. And it's just easier if you do this all at the machine and keep it nice and pressed. So I'll just lay this on here 
like that and sew it right on there. So I'm ready to sew it back on and just line it up as the best you can because like I said, we're gonna be trimming these up and if you just, just kind of, you know, figure out where those lines are gonna intersect and then just gently fold it over and just do the best you can. You, you can figure out what the general angle is gonna be. Now I think I'm gonna do one more cut. Now on most of my bricks, I am only gonna do two cuts. Some I will do three and some I will do one. Um, so this one I'm just doing three just to, for the sake of showing you. But I think for the majority of them, I'm just gonna do two. And then just to give it some variety. So just, this is the third one. Okay, so this is what the block looks like after I've got all three strips sewn in. And it is kind of wonky. And on some of these strips, they don't match up perfectly. But look at the back. I love the back, how it just goes back together so perfectly when you put those seam allowances towards the black. And theoretically, when you do it this way, the block shouldn't change size. But I am not perfect, and I'm sure that you're not perfect either. So when it comes to trimming this block, just do the best you can. Just you want it to be square, that's for sure. And so when you go to trim it, you will probably notice that you have some little edges that don't quite match up or your crisscrosses don't match up. This one looks pretty good, but um, when you go to, to trim it up, you just for sure want to trim up the, the black pieces that are sticking out. So we're going to trim those first and then take a look at uh, how even I got this block. I'll do the other side here too, but I can see that there's going to be a gap in here and that's okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I see my little gap right here. So it doesn't, it's not quite a straight edge because it's a little wonky. So I think the best thing to do right here is to trim it so that it is instead of three and a half by six, I am going to trim them all to three and a quarter by five. Now, some of these, uh, when you when you sew the blocks together, some of these you can hide in the seam allowance. But instead of taking that chance, I think I'm just going to I'm just going to trim them all down to three and a quarter, and so that will take care of that little part. So we're going to go three and a quarter. And then on the long, the, the long side, instead of six, I'm gonna go five and a half. And as I do this to all my blocks, that will cover any, any wonkiness or anything. So I will end up with a perfect rectangle that is three and a half by, I'm sorry, three and a quarter by five and a half. So that's what I'm gonna do to all of them. So yeah, that's gonna work out great. Okay, so it took a while, but I got all of these done, all 180 of them. So as you can see, I have some that have two strips, two strips, some that have three strips, and a few that have one strip. And so I just wanted a variety, but the real problem for me was figuring out a layout. And thank you for helping me with that. So I put up a poll in my on my community tab on my channel. And y'all are the best. I mean, you helped me out. It would have taken me two weeks to decide which one I liked better. And honestly, the one that y'all picked is not the one that I was going to go with. And so I'm so glad I have you as my tribe because... <laughs> I don't know, it was so hard. I don't know why it was so hard for me to pick, but I tried to put all the possibilities up there other than just a random one. So these were the four, and this is the one that y'all picked. So I'm going to put some sashing up on here. And for the sashing, I'm just using one more one inch strips. And I know that you are gonna ask me, how much of the black fabric did I use? And honestly, I don't even know how many strips I cut. It's so hard to tell because 
you know, like I said, some of them have three strips through it, some have two strips, some have one strip, and then I used strips also for the sashing. I wanted the sashing to be skinny like that and because I wanted it to kind of look like stained glass. So here is the final. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm going to call it spectrum because it just kind of goes through all the spectrums of different color. It almost has the look of stained glass so that the light is kind of shining through it. Uh, as far as the rows and columns go, I've got nine down and 20 across. Now, depending on the way that you want to arrange your colors, since there's 180 of them all together, you can also do rows of 10 down with 18 across. So that also works out really well. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what what style you want to use and, and how big you want your quilt. So the entire quilt measures about 47 by 64. And um, I think it looks pretty cool. I like I like the way it turned out. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of stained glass or like a prism or something like that. I think it looks pretty neat. And let me know in the comments if you plan on making something like this. And I'd love to see, you know, what yours looks like because it really depends on what fat quarters you use. So this was, um, it took a long time, well, longer than normal to make this quilt just because there's so many cuts and so many pieces. And the rotary cutter I used worked out great. And so I'm pretty impressed with that titanium rotary cutter as well. So um, that's it for this tutorial. I'm calling this Spectrum and I just, I really like it. I'm not gonna put a border on it. I decided I just want my, my design to go from edge to edge. So I'm just gonna do it in a simple black binding. So thank you for watching. This is Suze from Revelation Quilts. Stay creative. Please like it, subscribe, and I can't wait to make more. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.